What is up, everybody? I am Hoops and Hip Hop, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokeblock Podcast. Today's episode is gonna be a ton of fun um, because it's we're gonna be talking about something that I it's it's one of the areas of Pokemon that I'm like most uh, I guess you could say passionate about, excited about. I have the most to say, uh, and so it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we're gonna be talking about Pokemon designs and why they're so cool and why why it's just like it makes the games themselves so much better and uh we're even gonna get into some like personal pokemon fakemon design type stuff uh with my project and with my uh the work that my guest today has done the amazing legendary true green seven what's going on man hey i'm sure this is gonna be like everybody likes if you like pokemon you'll like pokemon design so this has to be interesting right like when whenever a new game comes out the most exciting thing is always the new pokemon so i mean i personally i mean that's the reason i play pokemon or am part of this franchise for the pokemon themselves other people you know maybe for the gameplay or for this uh, some someone's there for the plot but it's for the pokemon (laughs) themselves that's why i'm here yeah yeah exactly so yeah we're just gonna be going back and forth on because we've both been doing a lot of uh like making our own pokemon type of content on our own channels so it seemed like a sort of a good discussion to have and i think it's gonna be a lot of fun we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about like not only our own stuff but just like game freaks sort of uh work that they've done and we're gonna be talking about why like even like pokemon that you might not think are great are great and just kind of it, it's going to be a really fun conversation it's going to be a lot and i think it's going to work well because game like i imp- i try to implement the philosophy of game freaks design i mean like i can just pretty much say it like sugimori himself i think uh i'm not not i think i know i read the interview where sugimori like basically said the philosophy in terms of pokemon designs where he tries to make if a Pokemon's super cute, he tries to tone it down a little bit, maybe give it some goofy elements. If a Pokemon's super intimidating in the design phase, he'll give it something to make it a little cute or lovable. That way, mm-hmm. every Pokemon design is somewhat balanced and isn't... And that's what makes it look like a Pokemon. I think that's the formula that people recognize in Pokemon, where, you know, Pokemon aren't too cool, they aren't too <laughs> intimidating, they aren't, there's no creepy Pokemon that is too creepy. You can love any Pokemon, honestly. Right, like... Uh, to that point, that's also why uh, Oshawott has its freckles because yeah, exactly. He, he yeah. commented he didn't want it to be like too perfect looking or whatever, so he gave it some freckles. Uh, and then you always hear like not only Sugimori but other other designers talk about how every Pokemon needs to look like it could be your friend, like it could be your ally. Yeah. So. Which is funny because I think like game uh, Sugimori was probably definitely learning this pro- this formula while making generation one because like he said that even he wasn't able to really make that cute of po- you know pokemon too cute like his cutest pokemon that he designed was like clefairy <laughs> and even then there are way cuter pokemon in gen one that he got uh atsuko nishida the creator of like pikachu to make for the franchise so mm. i think it's 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 hard for them too it's it's it, it it's it's a difficult process right right yeah and that and that's that's we're gonna get into a ton more stuff but before i do i do need to get into our uh, sponsors because the sponsors help us do what we do here so i need to give them a quick shout out and so with that being said uh today's episode is brought to you by the tax defense group the team of professionals at the tax defense group are passionate about helping taxpayers resolve their tax debt their services include basic tax preparation tax audits resolving large tax debt and more they actively represent taxpayers throughout the entire usa so if you need help resolving your tax issues contact the tax defense group you can call the tax defense group today at 800-850-7 793 to get started. That number again is 800 850 7973, and you can visit them online at thetaxdefensegroup.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Writer Junkie. Are you thinking about starting a business or a side hustle? For all businesses to be successful, you need a website. Writer Junkie offers website development, content writing, and SEO services for business websites. So call Writer Junkie today at 805 587 7966, and you can visit them online at writerjunkie.com. We also have our UCAS Studios website that was just launched. Be sure to check that out with the link in the description uh, to get basically everything you get from the podcast on a really clean looking website. Uh, so yeah. Speaking of taxes and websites and business, <laughs> I think 
people all con constantly overlook how uh, a lot of the Pokemon designs are made because different people within the game development need necessitate a, a specific type of Pokemon like sometimes the like Morimoto I believe is the game like the one who m makes sure like the battling is balanced and all that so sometimes he'll mm -hmm. need a specific Pokemon that is this specific type uh, so they're like oh we need a grass uh, fire type I mean they didn't never okay they never did that we need a grass right. dark type so then they're like oh yeah, make a grass dark type or let's say the story planners they're like oh there's this specific moment or a specific town where we need to see the specific Pokemon so uh, anyway, make a Pokemon that will fit that role and so it's right. just it's not just yeah, there's a lot of people <laughs> and different reasons Pokemon exist. Yeah, there's like a ton more than just like they make a bunch of Pokemon and pick their favorites. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, a lot like, of people sometimes think like, oh, there's they either um, that there's just an unlimited amount of ideas, and that why didn't they do this Pokemon? Why didn't they do, they do that Pokemon? There are Pokemon like there are Pokemon ideas that are much better than the actual ideas, but sometimes you know it was necessary. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of why like. Because there are different, there's obviously different like teams of people in Game Freak. Like you have the people who actually design the Pokemon, then you have like the programmers and the people who work with the battle stuff. But all those different other teams that don't even have to anything to do with the actual design of the Pokemon, they also have a huge hand in the way the roster of like any given generation of Pokemon ends up becoming because you have the balancing stuff that will a lot of times affect the types of various Pokemon or like what types of Pokemon like get in. Um, yeah. And there's also like, I remember James Turner mentioning one time that uh, I believe he said it on Twitter that there's a person who comes up with the lore of the Pokemon. So like hmm. for his Fant Phantom, a Pokemon he created, uh, there was another person that came up with that whole idea that it's a spirit of a child that got lost in the forest. And so they're more or less kind of like a team effort where exactly where every kind of team is contributing a little bit to what the Pokemon becomes. And that's why it's definitely harder when you're one person on like a channel making a Pokemon <laughs> because sometimes, yeah, you'll make a, like a, not a mistaken design, but like, oh, there could have been a better alternative that people say in the comment section. And, but mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're one person, it's, you know, the art is a little bit harder. So, right. But, but, but speaking of what you said with James Turner, uh, a Pokemon that he designed, po Poipol, uh, like its lore was like brought to him first. Like he's, they're like, they wanted a Pokemon, uh, uh, an ultra beast that in its universe that in its dimension is considered like a starter pokemon so he made like poipole specifically more cute than and more uh, expressive than the other uh, ultra beasts right right and that's kind of a interesting take too because obviously when you've got multiple people sort of working on one thing that's most of the time going to be a good thing creatively just because you got more brains working together and yeah. you can consider more things but that's why you definitely also need like diversity in the in in, in the art space because you need different mm -hmm. perspectives in terms of you know different uh, backgrounds and different influences right. right exactly but like with that with that uh poipole example it's interesting because he like obviously that idea wasn't james's idea so he would have the way he designed it and the way we got poiple could have been just like completely different to what the original like the person who came up with that idea sort of had in mind when they came up with that idea likewise yeah. if uh uh james turner came up with a concept other people would interpret it in a different way so it, it's sort of a it's it's an interesting process when you think about it how each Pokemon comes to be in one way or another. I'm sure fans probably interpret Pokemon in a different way than the designers made. Like probably like there's a Pokemon that we're that fans are 100% wrong about their origin, <laughs> but like we think it's right, right. And, and we just don't know. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Like, cause it's interesting to think about whether some of those are actually true because yeah. there's a lot of videos of people going into that type of stuff, and some of them are super, super like fascinating and they make a lot of sense but you it's like it could just come out that like it's completely different what the actual like artists were thinking and it's just sort of the fans like connect. like and yeah sorry they're yeah basically just overthinking it but one thing that i think i'm we may be not overthinking because like nobody ever talks about it but like 
I wonder if this really if this really is true then the designers are genius and that is samurai so samurai you're like yes yeah, samurai otter okay has shells well shell swords are also it's on top of that that's the extra layer that's really genius but mm -hmm. one thing that otters do is they, they they place items and shells inside their fur for and they store it there <laughs> apparently they have like little fur pockets basically uh -huh. so it, it makes even more sense that you know the, this line stores shells on its body <laughs> and right People definitely over, uh, overlook that, whether or not it's true. It's people, fans, there are, almost every Pokemon has something that is overlooked. And I think Pokemon is getting better and better in terms of making designs where every part of the design has a function and a reason and isn't just, isn't just there for yeah. just to look good or... Exactly. A Pokemon that's a lot, that is a perfect example of that, that I just found this, I, I just barely found this out of, out of, I found this out about it. <laughs> there we go. A couple days ago when I was just doing research is Cherubi. Cherubi's like mm. just face value, super basic Pokemon. It's a cherry like with a face pretty much. Yep. But its name, Cherubi, like not only does it come from like cherry and ruby, like the color, but it also mm. comes from Cherubic, which is a word that is supposed to mean like childlike or like child, like child innocence or it's supposed to refer to that type of thing which is what cherubi is and then it and also even then, f going further a ch cherubic comes from the word cherub which is those like w which is a kind of angel <laughs> which comes from the hebrew charuv which right is right yeah an and then the reason why like obviously it's got uh there's the main like i guess base of cherubi and then it's got that little like stem that has like the second head that's like a baby one almost and yeah that, the reason for that is because uh fruits this is going to be a super general explanation by the way because i'm not i i'm not an expert on this but like the fruits like fruits like cherries and stuff like that that come in bunches that have like multiples on the same like stem if you will like those yeah. are called i guess they're called like they're called heads essentially uh, oh. there's there's the, there's another word yeah, to it sense. too but they're called heads and so that's why a that fruit, cherubi yeah. has a second head because that's like the term that is used for those types of fruit and so like when you when you find those details out it just makes you appreciate the pokemon so much more but even even if <laughs> you, that's the that's the, like every everybody constantly tells me when like whenever i'm telling them like some kind of origin they're like uh oh, the origin doesn't make the pokemon but just because it has some kind of background doesn't make it like more enjoyable for me or there are some people like that i mean it's i guess it's a valid opinion but um but even when a pokemon doesn't have some crazy cool origin i mean salandit for example it has a cool origin but the reason i have i i love salandit um is because like it's just cute. It just it, not even, and it's not even classically cute. It just skitters around, has that cute like face, and it, it, it's mm -hmm. just you can find that about any Pokemon, and that's actually like my brother is kind of the reason I realized that this is a philosophy that I kind of want to like push and like and uh, and uh, spread, which is that like my brother just like saw Slandit for the first time when it came out, and he's like, wow, I love it, and like there, he didn't need a reason to love it. He just you know. I love the personality. I love what it's about. I love the vibes that it's given me. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's what a Pokemon... That's what's so cool about Pokemon, that you don't really need a reason to like a Pokemon. And there's always a reason... There always is a reason to like any Pokemon. But you just... You bond with a Pokemon sometimes instantly. Or, you know, after mm -hmm. using it... After hating it and then using it in battle. Um, so I think, like, people being objective about Pokemon designs are usually, like, inconsistent in their opinion. Because, like, usually they'll be like, oh... This Pokemon is goofy and dull, but then they'll have there's another goofy and dull Pokemon that they love just because for personal reasons. Like, oh, I love that goofy and dull Pokemon, and he makes me happy. So like, right. there's no reason to try to justify in the end a Pokemon like your love for a Pokemon because, or try to be hypercritical even because even literally any Pokemon fan has personal reasons for like any liking any Pokemon, and I think that kind of I think people should try to take away their objectivity sometimes when it comes to Pokemon or like yeah. their uh, logic, I guess, because it's like, why not just enjoy all Pokemon? <laughs> well, right. Because like, if, if you can see other people do that, if you can see like just hearing a person describe their favorite Pokemon, even if it's a Pokemon you hate, you'll start liking it. Like you'll instantly like it a little bit more once hearing from a person who loves that Pokemon. So why not do that to yourself? Why not just try to like any other Pokemon? Because there's no reason to be objective, because you're not, you're probably not right even. <laughs> Nobody's right in terms of a Pokemon design. 
Yeah, I, th I think uh, having like an open mind about them is super important. Cause like you said, you can you can like be introduced to a Pokemon for the first time and like it for basically any reason. Likewise, you can yeah. dislike it for any reason. So I think like you should not, you should basically like keep an open mind about it in the future because you might learn something out you might learn something else about it that completely changes your perspective on it like uh for instance uh vanillite is a pokemon that was like and its whole family are like more or less like the majority of people dislike them just because oh it's an ice cream pokemon like that's not yeah. creative at all but i personally decided to dig into that family a little more and i found out uh that vanillite is like that whole line they're obviously based on soft serve ice cream but soft serve ice cream originated out of new york like that's where the mm. that's where it was first like developed and popularized basically and it's it's a unit of a pokemon that's and that place is based on new york so it's like it has a reason why it is the way it is and that sort of that kind of uh that kind of explanation kind of takes like people can still dislike it if they really dislike it but yeah a pokemon like that a lot of people don't like it because they're like oh it's uncreative well the yeah. thing that you think makes it uncreative is actually like a very specific like actually has a very specific reason like why it is that way so it's it's inspired and but here's what's so crazy that like a person can be like oh i don't like it because it's uncreative and try to give you their logic or whatever but then you can be like yeah but i don't think it's uncreative and then what what can they say <laughs> what can they say to that argument right like you thinking it's uncreative doesn't make the pokemon uncreative maybe if you're an art critique or something oh, yeah probably you can have a va more valid opinion than others but it's just in the end it's all it all comes to personal taste <laughs> and and what's crazy is that like i get like disliking a pokemon especially if you have especially if you're like uncom like you're just uncomfortable around the pokemon and don't know why or maybe you do know why but you just can't help it you're uncomfortable there are pokemon like that for me where i see it and i'm uncomfortable i don't hate it but i'm uncomfortable around it so i can't like help it but like there's no reason to hate a pokemon you know what i'm talking about you can dislike mm -hmm. like what's the reason to have a personal grudge against the pokemon unless you know i don't know, you encountered a, a, a pokemon that killed your team in a nuzlocke or something but yeah. it's not like it's a you know a thing that is necessary to hate in order to make the world a better place it's not like racism or or uh, <laughs> or something that yeah that's a thing you should hate because it will make a world a better place if you you know get it out of the world but like it's a pokemon design you're not gonna like the world's right. not gonna change for the better for you like just the, complaining the, about it the thing to remember about pokemon and it's kind of hard to remember it sometimes is that every one is a work of art and when it comes to yeah. art it's completely subjective so it's like pe there's going to be a pe there's going to be people out there that will like a certain pokemon and even if it's like a super super popular pokemon there's going to be someone out there that hates it like like Greninja, for example. Greninja was literally voted the most popular Pokemon earlier this year. Like, that's a fact yeah. that it was voted. But there's going to be someone out there that's like, ooh, I don't like the way its tongue, like, wraps around its neck. That's gross. And they're not going to like it because of that reason. So hmm, it yeah. just depends on the person's tastes. But speaking of tastes, I was going to ask <laughs> you. This is, this is a nice segue. Um, we talked about how, like... Uh, sort of what our i guess uh thoughts are versus like how game freak comes up with a pokemon so when you are making a pokemon for your own channel because you you've done like making pokemon based on like your daily walks that you do or your, like your fears or just a bunch of different things what are the yep. kinds of things you like to do when putting a pokemon together like what kind of like blend like inspirations and different like uh what what things do you like to bring together when you're making a pokemon i love it when i find a pokemon and i combine it with uh, find like an animal or whatever an object anything and combine it with something else in like a perfect way that like ah oh, they make sense together like for example um i made this pokemon that in my pokemon in creating uh pokemon from my from fears i took uh germophobia and i combined it with uh, a pig 
because pigs are actually very clean animals, <laughs> but uh, it's a, like a big misconception that they're dirty. Um, and I put like, I, I turned its like snout into like a mask because it's kind of the same shape to like a, like a N95 mask, I guess. Um, so it, it goes well together. It's like a nice theme that really goes well together. Like this N95 mask looks like a, a snout of a pig and, and pigs are actually very hygienic. So they would wear a mask if they were a germaphobe. And that's how I made a germaphobe Pokemon, you know, <laughs> instead of just making some random animal a germaphobe Pokemon, you know, giving like a bear a mask or something. Um, right. So I, whenever something just clicks perfectly, um, those are actually like my favorite, like real Pokemon in, in like in life, like um, like uh, oh, Applin, for example. Like people like I people when they first saw it, they're like, ah, oh, it's just an apple. <laughs> it's just, it's just the, like people just thought it was an apple Pokemon, and that, that's why mm -hmm. the leaks were a bad idea. That's why this was the worst generation to to just leak pictures of them because these are generation eight are the this are is the group of pokemon that you need to see them in motion a lot of pokemon look differently have different like secrets that that you that are revealed when they attack or when you see them mm -hmm. from a different angle like applin you'll see that it's a worm in an apple and not only a worm but a, a worm with a y which is a kind of dragon or a, a and right. specifically a lindworm it's a lindworm which is a kind of dragon inside of an apple and that's that's such a cool combination of the you know a, a, a cool take on an, a worm in an apple yeah, exactly. I, I love I, I super I'm I'm very much in the same boat because I love those are my favorite types of Pokemon that take two things that don't really belong together, but they make sense together for just one really like ingenious reason. And that's why exactly. and that's why Empoleon is like the more I've thought about it, the more like Empoleon is like just climbing the ranks of my favorite Pokemon ever. It's at least like number three at this point but Whoa, it, it, okay that's high. yeah yeah it's like so, and the reason why is because i love the way that it references uh napoleon bonaparte like yeah. it like that's actually in its design which you've got a penguin and you've got this like french military leader guy that makes no sense except <laughs> when you consider that it's an emperor penguin emperor. and yeah, napoleon so wasn't like and that just like that's the link that allows those two things to be together and it results in this super creative pokemon and then the cherry on top in that specific instance is that uh empoleon's height and i think weight also are similar to what napoleon bonaparte's actually were and i think that's just a yeah. super nice subtle reference and yeah i love it like when they and what's cool is like i witnessed this literally right now when we both like kind of said like an emperor penguin at the same time where we appreciate this little thing that you know, another person may not care like they're like who cares this and that's a cool take i just want i just want to see its stats and know if it's good in battle or whatever <laughs> but like yeah. before when we were saying oh why not why not like a pokemon like why hate a pokemon it's less about oh because we want you to like every pokemon and we like pokemon and we want everybody to like pokemon it's more just the fact that it's for you it's for it's for the people at home listening where it's like there's no like it's it'll benefit you if you just enjoy the little things like that and in regards to anything in life because like just disliking something like that for reasons for various reasons when you can actually just appreciate something like that so like a genius take like right. the emperor like Penguin thing like it's just fun. like there's a difference between uh like you could still dislike something like if you disliked Napoleon yeah. and you felt that passionate about it like y you can still dislike it but you should definitely be open to just like appreciating things like that because i do know for real that there are a lot of people uh who only really gravitate towards the stats and the competitive aspect of it which personally so that's the thing yeah Personally, for me, as a per as a person who isn't into the competitive scene, and I'm much more, I, I like to look into the details of the designs. I couldn't care less if a Pokemon sucks in battle because I just care about what what went into the design. And sometimes, I mean, like like you were saying earlier, it doesn't have, it doesn't even necessarily have to be some sort of like intricate, like multifaceted inspiration that makes the Pokemon. Like one yeah. one type of Pokemon I really like just for the fact that they're adorable are round pokemon so <laughs> rowlet and sphiel and oh, yeah. like pokemon like that that's just like 
they appeal to me so much just for the fact that they're round. Like I, to I, be fair, they're very cute. Like, yeah. Do you have an example of like a Pokemon that you gravitate towards, even though it's not like generally accepted to look good? Uh, um. I'm trying to think of mine. I don't know. Right off the top of my head, I'm sure there is one, but I, I'm not. One isn't necessarily hmm. coming to mind right off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean like. Uh, well, I mean, one Pokemon of this generation, although I know the reason I like it, like, uh, one Pokemon that I love is, uh, Copper Raja, mm -hmm. and I know why, I, like, Elephant's my favorite Pokemon, it's green, it's, it's an actual big elephant, unlike Donphan, which I also love, um, but, like, it's the first time where, like, I'm, I really like this Pokemon, and everybody else is not liking it, and it's like, <laughs> And I'm kind of being a little, uh, it gets me anxious because I'm like, what, what is wrong with me? Why is everybody like, am I like seeing something that everybody else is not seeing? And it's, uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird when that happens. Right. Yeah. I can totally, I can totally understand that. But you sort of have like, I guess a more specific reason to like it. Yeah. I get that one, but I'm trying to think of like one that like, but that's the thing. Like I can like, I'm okay. I'll look, I'm looking at a list of Pokemon right now. And I'm like, I'll just pick a random Pokemon that I'm like, oh, I like, even though it's not a popular Pokemon, I'm like, okay, that's. I like it. LGM. It's cute. Okay, that's because it's cute, so you get it. <laughs> okay, so that's right. a different one. I'm trying to... F <laughs> the but yeah, but some people don't think LGM's cute. Um, let's pick a not cute Pokemon. Okay, oh, Heatmore. Everybody hates Heatmore. I don't know. I, I like it. <laughs> like, I'm fine with it. it, uh -huh. it like, I like... I, I like... I like its patterns, and I like... I like its... Um, it's a uh, lore with Durant. It makes sense, and it's really it's really nice. I mean, it's an... Ant a, a lot of people... A lot of... A lot of opinions that I don't get are people disliking an ugly Pokemon that is based on an ugly thing, <laughs> like an anteater or barbarical. Like, what did you expect it to look like? Like, there can be ugly Pokemon. <laughs> it, it's that's how real world is. Okay, so the perfect example. I was I was actually just looking yesterday. I was looking up something about Bruxish, and yeah. Bruxish like. Everyone hates it because it's super ugly, but the thing that it's based on actually looks pretty much exactly like it. So yeah. it's like, Huma, yeah, Huma, it's Huma, ugly. Huma, are not good looking. Yeah, it's like, it is ugly, I'll give you that, but it's not like they just went and like drew this like horrendous fish. Like they did it for a reason. And another one along the, those same lines is, uh, holy crap, the... Crabomitable, that, yeah, the name almost yeah. escaped me. Where it's like, it's super ugly, but it's ugly because it's based on a Yeti crab, which is why it's a Yeti crab. And I think just that alone... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so good. That's so, that just makes it so much more redeemable. I'm not, I'm still gonna say, like, yeah, I think it's ugly, but that just simple fact raises, just enhances, or it makes my opinion of it so much better than it was before, just kind of taking it for face value. Yeah. Oh, another example, like Toucan, and like I used to be like, ah, oh, it's just a Toucan. But then, like seeing it, uh, its beak light up when it, it it moves, just the just its attitude. I do like the fact that it's angry and like pissed off all the time. This sometimes you just enjoy the vibe of a Pokemon. And might as well, even if the even if the design isn't crazy awesome, it's just why not? <laughs> Unless yeah. maybe maybe hating a Pokemon makes you you know gives you happiness. So I guess you can do that too if you want. It's just. <laughs> Uh, not as fulfilling right yeah i mean you d you did bring up uh barbarical barbarical has always been one of my least favorite pokemon just because i mean it i it is the ugliness of it that just like gets to me but also i can never unsee every time i see barbarical it just reminds me of the that one scene from toy story where they get to sid's house and he's got a bunch of toys that are yeah. made up of like mismatched parts and that's yeah. that's what i see in barbarical and so every time i'm just like you are an abomination of a of a pokemon <laughs> but it's because of like what i connect to it rather yeah than... there's a lot of things like that where like people connect something that isn't really pokemon related and that's the reason they don't like it or like it um but what's funny is that so like barbarical like the reason i am like actually like it is because of like the uh, ugly barnacle story from spongebob so i'm like oh yeah it's an ugly barnacle <laughs> oh <laughs> so my like gosh that's cool um but what's funny is that like if you want to talk about like d our different tastes like cyndaquil i love it but it's technically my least favorite starter pokemon in terms of just design <laughs> and why w why would that be so 
it's again it's not that there's any objectively anything wrong with it it's still like in in like if i i think i ranked it in a video where i'm like oh it's still like an 8.5 or something <laughs> it's really good um it just so happens to be my least favorite and i think that is because it's just its eyes are closed you can barely see its mouth that means it has no expression <laughs> most most of the time and when a pokemon you know it has no expression it's hard to hard to relate to it it's hard to gravitate towards it uh other than that like it's fine, it's fine. I, I don't think it's a bad thing that it has its eyes are closed it makes sense and it also it doesn't look bad it's just if you if you it, it all comes down to that where all the other po starter pokemon are cute and are happy or have some kind of expression <laughs> right i think Cin it's interesting because people always ask me why i like cyndaquil and usually most of the time why i like a pokemon is because it's got like that cool inspiration we've been talking about earlier or uh it's just i don't know like that's usually the the kind of thing that makes me like some of my more favorite pokemon but with cyndaquil it literally was just like i had started my channel like it was like a year or so like i recently had started my channel had it for about a year or so and i was thinking mm -hmm. of like who my mascot would be because everyone was like getting a mascot at that time and i was just trying yeah. to think who my favorite pokemon was like what i want and every time i thought about that cyndaquil always came into my mind and it was just like it wasn't necessarily because i had a deep love for cyndaquil that i carried with me like this whole time it was just like it was always one of my more favorites and i was asking myself this question it always came to my mind and i was like yeah i like cyndaquil let's go with cyndaquil and so n now through all these years of like i guess me attaching myself to cyndaquil that's made me like it even more because like I always really liked it, hence why I made it my mascot. But now yeah. I've sort of gone on this like this adventure, quote unquote, this journey with it, where it's been like my designated go-to Pokemon, and that's sort of just like made me like it even more. The I was actually funny because as like Poketubers, a lot of times we we try not to change our opinions on our favorite Pokemon, or like we try to. Uh, like if a new Pokemon is slowly becoming like one of our favorites, like we're like, oh snap! Like do we have to like change our mascots or whatever? <laughs> right. But um, I mean that hasn't hasn't happened to me. But like, it's like I have to like make my opinions official, which is it's like a parent, it's like a an anxious thing. It's not like a thing that is necessary. It's like it's unnecessary, right. honestly. Yeah, I don't know if I would ever. I don't think I would ever change my mascot because I mean that's like. It's like, if you've been around on YouTube for a while, people kind of know you because of, like, the Pokemon you like. So yeah. there, there's a whole, like, identity with that. But also, it's just, like, for me, I guess, it's like, Cyndaquil is sort of... It's obviously a Gen 2 Pokemon, so I've sort of gotten to use it and know it and just, like, grow with it for yeah. basically as long as pokemon's been around and i that's a big part of it too is like it'll always be sort of like that that companion type of pokemon that whatever happens it'll be my go-to it'll be my do you have yeah. a criticism of septile um i don't know that i necessarily have a criticism of it but I would say it's probably my least favorite of the fully evolved Hoenn starters. And, that, so and that's and not so to say, because yeah. like Hoenn in particular, it's interesting because I think top to bottom, I think the, Hoenn and Sinnoh, I feel this way with Sinnoh, but top to bottom, I think that like they have the strongest set of starters just because for me personally, there is not one... Like, not even, like, any of the stages that I would say that I really dislike. I would say maybe, like, the lowest two of, like, any of the stages of the Hoenn starters would be, like, Marshstomp and Combuskin. But even yeah, them, sense. I think they're, like, for middle evolutions, they're good. I think they're fine. And then, the once again, the final evolutions, I think Sceptile is really cool. It's just, personally... I've gravitated towards like Blaziken and Swamper over the years, but I genuinely couldn't give you a critique of Sceptile. Really? Because I, I do right. like I do like it. It just it's not my first pick. It's, and that's usually how Pokemon opinions are. You don't have to hate or, or right. love a Pokemon. And that be, yeah, I like that it. might <laughs> be because like there wasn't something that uh, 
I guess, drew me to the Trico line, because I would say uh, with, with Blaziken, it just exuded that just like cool vibe and it was also one of the first like hoenn pokemon that was revealed and so it sort of got like a bo- oh yeah a boost in hype because of that so i think that stuff sort of gravitated to me towards that line and with swampert it's all about mudkip because mudkip mudkip is just adorable it's just a yeah. really really well-made pokemon and so that kind of overlaps into swampert just by association so there was nothing that like like those those two lines just got i guess there was something about them that pointed me in their direction and wasn't necessarily that for the trigo family but i mean it's the same that's a, this was a crazy i'm mean, not crazy i mean that's i guess um, i like a lot of pokemon but like that yeah i have the same opinions on blaziken and swampert it just so happens that i like septile more you know <laughs> like right. i love blaziken and, Sw- and swampert i love mudkip I, I love combuskin honestly um but uh for example, like some people will be like, "Ah, oh, Septal has a, I don't know, a, a weird stomach. I don't know, it's, it's a little bulgy, or or its <laughs> neck is long. I don't know." But that that's the thing. It's like those don't matter because to a person who likes that Pokemon, <laughs> it just it because those aren't a. You can't really find a lot of objective flaws in a lot of these Pokemon. Like um, you can find because like even the Pokemon that are objectively worse than other pokemon because obviously yes it's art there's gonna be things that are technically skilled <laughs> they look better they based on composition or proportions whatever but even the ones that aren't you know uh, don't have the coolest proportions at least they have something else that balances out maybe the concept is better or the or the colors are better you know and i mean that's a thing that i guess if you were going to talk about our own personal designs that's a thing you have to like take into account where it doesn't have to be perfect in terms of everything that makes a pokemon but hey if it has a uh something awesome someone's gonna be entertained (laughs) yeah exactly and it's been for me personally uh with creating my own pokemon designs it's been super fun to sort of i guess learn what makes a good pokemon and then i guess also figure out what i like to do when i'm making a pokemon in terms of i guess my own style of it because i sort of with making uh, my pokemon cardinal series uh that in and of itself was sort of a a big lesson and a progression in terms of like getting better at these concepts and these ideas and making them into actual skills but one thing that i sort of I guess realized over time was that uh like we mentioned earlier uh the pokemon that i like the most and that i think are the best are the ones that blend those inspirations that don't have anything to do with each other or that just like come together in a really creative way so later on i started to sort of do that like i would i would have a pokemon that uh that I had like a basis for it was just like an animal or something just whatever it would whatever the case may be and then I would come up with something that I could put onto it that was not really expected like with the uh I just had the uh the fossil pokemon for my series come out and I've mentioned this I think yeah. I'm gonna mention this in a uh future video too but like uh I wanted something to sort of blend them together and or like connect them together because like they're sort of counterparts as fossil pokemon and i thought of like oh well one of my fossils is a saber tooth tiger so that's that's an animal that's sort of been known about for a while and then the other one the it was based on a dinosaur that was discovered in canada super recently so like the thing that was notable about it is that it was a super recent discovery and so through that Mm. i kind of came up with this idea of uh connecting them with like a theme of like old and new and the the more specific like uh direction i went with that was like black and white versus color so like my saber tooth Hmm. tiger is is black and white it's grayscale so it represents the like the black and white era because it's uh it's older we've known about them for a while versus the new dinosaur that we just discovered it it has the color inspiration because it's more recent and modern so super cool yeah just 
I don't know, like things like that when they have that those different layers. I I love it. So um oh, one thing I did recently with colors in my Pokemon designs, I I released uh, my starters, right? Um and I mean, this is technically a, a nice little uh teaser for for their evolutions, but for example, uh I one of them is a grass elephant, right? Mm -hmm. And I made it gray and green, right? Um, and, and it's great, obviously, because it's like an elephant too, but it's also gonna become a rock type <laughs> and it looks like a, 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 a statue with some moss on top of it okay. instead of just an elephant with some moss on top of it. It's gray intentionally. And you never know, maybe that's a half of the Pokemon have something like that that we never even noticed. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it was perfect that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you if you had any, uh, if you had any details for the listeners on your starters. Hmm, if you, okay, I mean that's one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to spoil it too much. If there was, well, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil the ty the typing of like another, but like for example, the um, the the cow, it's its colors are very like relatively monotone and and, and not dull, but they're just not super saturated. And that's because it's good. They're gonna become saturated. <laughs> like in the, like that's part of like I made sure that my starters they have some kind of progression in the colors too. So for example, the elephant is gonna be the colors are gonna become darker and cooler. Okay? and like more you know have a cooler tone and darker the uh -huh. the 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 cow starter that i made of the fire type it's gonna the colors are gonna be as it grows uh brighter and lighter <laughs> uh, and more saturated and uh -huh. the dolphin the water type is gonna become more and more colorful and psychedelic as it evolves right but also darker <laughs> <laughs> like awesome. more contrast all right, so one more question before we leave off uh, that I, I thought would be good to ask you. Of all the Pokemon you've made for your channel, uh, is there one that's like your favorite that you like hmm. the most? Uh, I This is the one that I, I guess when I'm, someone asks me this, I do say, but I never, I don't know if it's, it's probably my the one that I'm personally, this is my personal favorite. Um, definitely not like the best design or the best concept. It's just my, I don't know, something about it I like. I made this, so I went to, in one of the creating uh, Pokemon on a walk video, I went to this uh, medieval art museum, okay? And medieval art is famous for just having the t terrible proportions, all the animals look wonky, all the humans look terrible, there's no perspective, because, you know, they, some of it is intentional, but a lot of it is because, you know, the art, the renaissance didn't happen yet, so they didn't know how to paint, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> um, and also, the animal, like the magical creatures that they were, uh, painting they didn't have any reference they couldn't just go find a lion or look up a lion in a mm -hmm. in a zoo or whatever on, online um so there they had this famous uh there are a lot of panthers and lions uh that are in medieval art and they look like big cats with fingers and human faces <laughs> like the faces <laughs> aren't feline faces so i created a legendary or mythical pokemon uh, that is basically that. It's like a, a lion-like Pokemon, but it has a hu more humanoid face like Absol, but uh, almost like a mustache too, because it's like British, <laughs> and it's like, it's this fairy, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's like this fairy type lion humanoid <laughs> that, again, it just, it goes around and and uh, brings, it, it brings good luck, I guess, and it's called Pantherald. Mm. Um, and I, it just looks, it's just a perfect representation of like, hey, what if the reason in the Pokemon world these medieval line paintings look wonky because that's actually how they look like. They actually, you know, in real life, they right. look like this legendary, this legendary Pokemon looked like that, not because they weren't good painters. I like translating things in real life into different contexts in the Pokemon world. Like, for example, maybe you're probably doing this in your region. Like, uh, maybe there's this monument that, uh, that it exists um in the location that your region is based on and instead of it being you know a monument that was given by uh, maybe this building looks like a, a certain way because you know of the architecture in the in your region this poke this building looks a certain way because it was so designed to look like a certain pokemon you know um right. i like rewriting history uh through pokemon lens yeah that's a that's a super creative way to look at it for sure and i think if there's one thing i think uh I've learned, I mean, I've learned a bunch through just do, doing this project about just Pokemon creation and I guess, I guess like the world building of Pokemon too. But uh, yeah. one thing I've learned is that there are truly like the amount of ideas, the amount of designs you can come up with are truly 
endless. So no one can say, oh, they're running out of ideas because there yeah. there isn't a limit to ideas. You can make a good Pokemon out of literally anything if you've got a good amount of inspiration to it. Like that's and, and that's, say, that's what's so cool about them. Like I'm sure you probably have this too where like the channel feels way more fulfilling when you're creating things <laughs> uh, like this um you, especially personally because on my channel for a long time i think like the goal has been to not just teach about pokemon but teach like make people appreciate the real world because that's what any fiction is, you know is based on the real world <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like inspir it takes inspiration from of history and animals and the geography and stuff like that and i think back then like years ago where most of my videos were just like fact videos or whatever or um you know top tens um the the way i would convey these this lesson was you know through top tens like try like just you know talking about a pokemon that was based on something or like some kind of mythological creature but nowadays i can do that i can teach these you know this a certain mythological creature by creating a pokemon based on that mythological creature or by creating a pokemon based on some animal that i like um and you know getting pokemon fans into the into history and uh, you know zoology or i don't know botany <laughs> whatever it is that i'm talking about that video right it's just fun yeah yeah i i definitely agree too i i for sure still love to do like i've done historically like trivia videos and things like that yeah. and i like that because i love learning about sort of uh i guess the development of the games themselves and little yeah. cool things that are in the game like that's that's a side of pokemon that's super fascinating to me too but there is a lot to be said about like oh like I built this, I created this, like, this is mine type of thing. So, <laughs> so I, I totally feel you. And I think that is a good place to leave off too. Um, but I want to thank you again, man, for coming on. It was super great to talk to you. Uh, no problem. And, Cause I think, I think we do have a lot of, uh, similar ideas and like opinions about Pokemon. Like we have different ones, but I think we're super, we definitely are like-minded in how every pokemon can be good and you're definitely awesome. a chill person <laughs> that you're not a person that has a, any extreme opinion so that's probably the reason yeah <laughs> yeah both... yeah I'm, i i i'd say that's probably true i'm pretty chill but uh, hey n next if you want me to come on again we can talk about you know things that we don't agree on in pokemon oh yeah yeah for fun. sure i think i've i've told like a couple people this too but i think i'll, I'll eventually have you guys on again just after yeah. i kind of get a chance to talk to everyone else but um with that being said though uh be sure to like and follow if you're not following wherever you're listening and be sure to check out ron as well i'll link his stuff in the description and uh if you haven't subscribed or checked him out he's an awesome poketuber um and he's got like a ton of awesome videos especially if you've if you're following for me and you like my cardinal series he's creating a lot of his own pokemon too so you'll like that as well uh and with that being said you can check out our amazing sponsors in the description as well and i will be back next week with another podcast and until then have a great weekend and i will smell you guys later